Welcome to Own the Chaos. Chaos crew. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. And then there's the Kronos Group. Yes, people, how could I not have a pot stock on this list? Brad and Fat Man Zoom are here to help you own it. All right, we got the top stocks to buy if Kanye wins the presidency. Taking it to the suits, being relatable and hilarious. That is crazy. We have a nice super boner, quite Holy a lovely hell. green one. Over $31. We have a nice super boner. What up? What up, everybody? Everybody in the chaos fam. It is Stock Watch Sunday. It has been a crazy week this past week. We're only gearing up to be even crazier next week. We have all kinds of stuff to go over this week and tonight. And it has just been absolutely crazy already. So uh, futures are up. Dow's already up 150, 180 points right now. The NASDAQ is already up about 114 points now as well. It's been... Uh, a wild start to the to futures market already. And it's interesting because we're starting to see even more increased COVID cases, obviously. And so um, weird to kind of see the market moving like this, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit, plus our top five stocks that we're going to be uh, watching for this week as well as it relates to earnings. But Fat Man Zoom, what's up, my man? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Good. Good weekend. I was just watching. I just turned on the uh, SpaceX launch. Yeah. Um, I got a little note about it. So I just tuned into that. That looks good. Has me all kinds of excited. Um, but no, it should be an interesting week. It's, it feels like things are kind of settling out in general. Yeah. We had so many earnings craziness. Um, so it feels good to kind of get a little bit of a breather, but I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping we get some good action this week. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see, uh, when we're, we're, we're starting to develop a, uh, a, you know, pattern of just consistent 150,000 plus give or take uh, positive infections every day now that we're seeing in, in the U S and we're seeing the markets continuing to go up. Um, I know that we had some positive news from the vaccine, but uh, a lot of people are abandoning some of these remote workplaces. They're aban abandoning some of the uh, stocks that kind of uh, helped us through this time, especially as people are working uh, from home People are staying at home more often and we're starting to see more lockdowns, yet the market seems to continue to respond uh, pretty positively. And a lot of people can argue that maybe that has a lot to do with earnings because companies that are being publicly traded for the most part are doing actually remarkably well. Um, obviously, with certain sectors being hit the hardest and still haven't quite recovered as, as much. But I think investors right now are still trying to look as far forward as they can with the vaccine stuff. But we still have a long way to go and, and we're still not out of the woods just yet. Yeah, um, you know, we had a conversation about the the how the markets would respond and and maybe not as drastically as before. I don't think anybody believes that there's going to be a similar crash as before. Like we're not going to see those levels. Yeah, but there may be some surprise about the response. I for one don't necessarily feel that way. Just because when you think about the market, the uncertainty is the issue. They've been telling us for a while that there would be a second wave yeah. once it started getting cold. And so we've known that. Um, and so I think that if there's any uncertainty that happens is when things start to happen, when things start to impact the market. So I don't know if anything's really that much of a surprise, um, but we had a bit of a fake out. I still think it's, it's about stimulus. We've been talking about it. I think yep. the conversation is going to turn back towards stimulus. And once that becomes a headline, we're going to see some continual volatility in the market. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that you brought that up. It's like, everybody's kind of been focused on the election. Everybody's been focused on a lot of other things. And it's as if everybody kind of forgot about the stimulus, except for those who still need it pretty desperately. And we, we've talked about um, about 13 million employees potentially in the hospitality space which you're really familiar with as well still suffering and still really need that stimulus the airliners still need stimulus too even if the vaccine was delivered and and distributed tomorrow uh yeah. the, the the airliners are still in a world of hurt and it's still going to be a long road for them so it, there's definitely um a, a bit of a, a a rotation that we've seen 
you know, that a lot of analysts like to use that term rotation, but we have seen it uh, from some of the tech stocks going into some of the recovery ones. But I think that we're getting a little bit premature here. And we've, we talked about Zoom and I actually started to get myself into Zoom a little bit more on Friday and Thursday as it started to come down. It dro dropped around 30% from its highs. Uh, and uh, man, I just feel like this one's going to continue to roll here as well as some of the other remote workplace. I think what people fail to realize, and we've talked about this a little bit last week, was that even if the vaccine comes and the vaccine's still here, remote work's not going anywhere. And we talked about even just the commercial real estate, uh, you know, uh, industry being really probably in a, in a lot of trouble because I don't know if they're going to come back the way that they did. A lot of, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that remote work's here to stay and it's only going to continue to grow in demand. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I actually, so this isn't necessarily Zoom. Obviously, I'm bullish on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't believe it went below 400. That I was can't crazy. Either. I know. Um, but in sort of the same context of stocks that have thrived over the stay at home, I was at the bar earlier and I was getting in a debate with my buddy. I actually made a bet. All right, I want to hear what you think about this. All right. So <clears throat> my buddy, Chris, who's, got money to trade and he just started trading this year um he's been on a roller coaster of a ride but like we just got into talking about all these stocks and i explained to him my strategy we have very different strategies <laughs> but he is super committed on his mindset so we made a bet that nordstrom he has nordstrom oh god yeah and i had tesla <laughs> which one would have greater gains from now till the end of next year by the end of the next year which one would be would have greater gains by the end of next year that was our bet percentage wise you're saying percentage wise yes so if it's up 50 percent nordstrom and tesla's up 20 percent next year comparatively to now then he wins what do you think about my bet i took tesla i think it's a good bet i mean listen if he had picked any other retailer not named nordstrom i would say maybe you'd, you'd he'd give you a run for your money but nordstrom is absolutely the worst probably re worst retailer right now uh their balance sheet was not doing well before all this happened and i mean god like if they would if he would have gone like something like tj maxx or maybe under armor like we've talked His about backup was macy's oh god yeah so i mean he's in, he's in, he's in a lot of trouble yeah, he's eat, he's <laughs> he's eating some of your mom's crack pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a we had a good debate. We, I made a couple bets, um, but we had a good debate, and I told him I'd call him out and uh, tell him he's absolutely nonsense. He's, <laughs> he's he's got Robin Hood pajamas. I guarantee yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> Robin Hood pajamas. I freaking love it. We need a we need to come up with some Robin Hood Robin Hood footy pajamas. I wish it, if we probably wouldn't get in trouble for something like that. I think that uh, would, I think that they would hilarious. they would sell out. They would literally sell out. But come on, <laughs> Chaos Crew, come on. You're with me on this one. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it could make moves, but by the end of next year, yeah. I don't know. I don't see. I yeah. don't know. We'll see. Um, just so. what, speaking of chaos crew, we got a lot of you guys hanging out here, about 243 of you hanging out in YouTube. We're also simulcasting over on Twitch right now. We have uh, just a few followers just watching so far and actually some uh, subscribers over on Twitch as well. We are simulca simulcasting now on both of these platforms. L happy to have you guys here. Also, Blade Runner was donating to the channel, said Fat Man Zoom needs some black, ri black rifle coffee. <laughs> I don't drink it's caffeine. Not a, it's, not a, it's not a coffee drinker, but hey, I'll take it. That's fine by me. And then Joseph Dion with the donut. his black rifle. Who's, who does? Dion. He was promoting that today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then uh, Joseph with the $20 donation. Thanks, man. Says 5% boner candle and rocket was delayed, but it's still there when I got after earnings at 2060. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So, um. Yeah, Rocket started to make some moves, so I'm hopeful that we'll see start to see some more movement out of Rocket next week as well. Some interesting uh, options activity uh, that a lot has a lot of analysts intrigued. Some calls uh, all the way up, upwards of around twenty seven dollars or so. So um, yeah, Rocket's going to continue to do well, I think. And we've already talked enough about it, but um, thanks for the donate, Joseph. Really appreciate it. You want to shout anybody else out in the uh, in the fam right now? Who's yeah, chatting. Yeah. Um well, so I just want to respond to something. Arsene said, do we not like Robinhood? We have no issues with Robinhood as a platform. We don't prefer it, 
but I think that it's very simplistic and it's straightforward. No issues with it. My beef is with Robin Hooders and those hood rats. <laughs> that's who my beef's with. Um, and they're nonsense. And so that's that's where, where I get sort of my blood boiling. But um, no, we got Steve King in the house. As always, it's a privilege. Hey, and congratulations to Steve King. Just got a promotion. So show him some, lo- some love, crew. Um, Jonathan Schreiber. Ema's always in the house trolling. Jesus, <laughs> what's going on? Um, but we got a couple of bulls, which is nice to see. And always... Esperanza. Yeah. So if you guys don't, if you guys want to know what we're talking about as far as the Bulls are concerned, those are po- people that are in our Chaos Crew. So those folks have been with us for six months plus. So if you're if you're within the Chaos Crew, your uh, Bears will turn to Bulls. If you're hanging out with us for for that long, um, and I see a lot of people that aren't in the Chaos Crew. So if you're wondering what that is, it's essentially the channel memberships. So if you just click join and next to subscribe or the link in the description, if you can't find the join button. Uh, You'll get a daily watch list from us, and we are uh, we also do private live streams and all kinds of other good stuff. You get access to our public portfolio via Weeble as well if you're part of the crew. So if you guys want to do that, if you find value to that, you also want to support the channel, we certainly would appreciate it. Fat Man Zoom, we're, get, we're approaching 1,000 members in the Chaos Crew. We are, and we felt like we needed to do something special For when we hit 1K, we talked about it on the private Q&A on Friday. We are going to do something especially special. Can you say that? (laughs) Especially Especially special. special. (laughs) Especially special for when we hit 1,000K. Should I tell them now or should I I make them wait a little bit? I don't know what 1,000K is, but you should tell them now. All right, so when (laughs) we hit 1,000K, (laughs) we are going to do a giveaway and... So we're going to randomly choose somebody in that thousand members. And that person is going to get one share of Tesla stock. So we're going to buy you one share of Tesla stock. If you are that randomly drawn person. So at the time, and we'll let people know it'll be announced when we hit one K and basically the next stock watch Sunday, we're going to go ahead and announce the winner um, we'll do a random drawing, but anybody that gets in before that stock watch Sunday, you will have an opportunity to be a part of it. And uh, so one crew member will get a share of Tesla. That's right. We have about 930 uh, chaos crew members right now. And so we are uh, fastly approaching as we have 70 to go. Once we hit that 1000 mark, we'll be giving away one free Tesla share to you guys. Uh, and and uh, it'll be at random. So it won't be like, here's your number 1000, whoever is number 1000. We're going to pick someone out of that thousand uh to uh, give that away to so we just wanted to show our appreciation to you guys and say thanks and uh man it's just been it's been wild how fast this has grown brother it's been it's been awesome i can't wait for the next thousand and and be maybe even beyond that oh yeah it's been it's been awesome it's been uh it's been really humbling to to see the, to see the response yeah man and all you guys' comments you know we read all of the comments and um you know, we we feel really good about our crew. We'll stack our crew up against anybody's community. So appreciate the love, appreciate the support. And we're going to keep this thing going until the wheels fall off. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, all right. So what do you say we get into the top five stocks that we're watching this week? How are you feeling about that? I mean, I, listen, I think I'm surprised it's taken so long for you to get into it because I'm worried you're going to miss the Ravens game. I thought I you'd know, be man. fucking chop chop. Listen, hard stop at 9, 830 today. Eight, hard stop at 830. Yeah, we got Ravens and Patriots. Um, I'm super pumped for it. Uh, I think All that... right, so I'll keep my comments short and we'll get to as much Q&A as we can. But uh, yeah, let's roll. <laughs> Sounds good. So the top five stocks that we are watching this week has everything to do with earnings yet again as we wrap up earnings season. And the first one that I want to go over this week is Palo Alto. Now, we talk about CrowdStrike a lot within uh, our community, and that's kind of one of our favorites as it, related, as it relates to cybersecurity. But Palo Alto is right there with them as well, and it kind of doesn't get the, the same kind of love as CrowdStrike does. But the company expects you year over year revenue growth of 19 to 20 percent um, from 915 to 925 million dollars their estimated earnings per share at a dollar 33 um, this is something that I think is going to continue to grow uh, with Palo Alto and cybersecurity we just got done talking to you guys about uh, remote work and how that's going to continue to grow well if you're going to be doing a lot more over the 
internet airwaves, if you will, uh, you're going to need beefed up cybersecurity. And that's where Palo Alto really comes into play. And so if you're starting to see more and more demand for remote work, you're going to see more and more demand for Palo Alto. I think we're going to see a considerable growth here. Their CEO has been very optimistic on their outlooks. I'm looking forward to seeing if they even raise their outlooks this quarter, maybe going into 2021 as well. Estimated earnings per share at $1.33. I think they come in at $1.45. Last quarter, they came in at $1.48, so I think that they could even come up even higher than that, but I like Palo Alto a lot. I think they come in and, and crush it tomorrow morning. Yeah, um, I agree that I think they beat. I have them at $1.42. Um, what I like about Palo Alto, it might not be the sexiest name. It might not be grabbing the headlines, um, but they're not afraid to spend money. Uh, they have cash on hand. They actually um, didn't have... I expect them to to show more cash on hand this time around. So I think cash flow is going to be really good, but um, they're not afraid to go to their business. And any of these type of companies, these cyber security or cloud companies, now's the time to strike while the iron's hot. So I like how they're active. I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I think this is a sleeper, but I do really like it. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the results. So $1.42. I like that guess. Um, I think that down here at 221, where it bounced, that is a solid support for it. So if by some ch chance we see tomorrow that the investors or the market either does some profit taking because of the huge run up we've seen over the last couple of weeks, or maybe the uh, earnings don't don't come out quite as favorably as they were expected to be. Look for it maybe to grab this up at 217 because I would be really surprised to see if this doesn't um, come back down here. What did I say? 217? No, I'm sorry. Uh, 218 is probably more of the more reasonable area for support. But you can see here on the daily chart that it's held that really well. It's actually coming up on a resistance where it closed that on Friday at around 262. So we'll see if that continues uh, tomorrow when earnings come out. What you got next for me, my man? Yeah, so next we have on the list, uh, tall stick. That's what it means. <laughs> Somebody asked if I knew what that means. Oh. Uh, Palo Alto is Spanish. Yeah. All right, so... Walmart. So Walmart reports earnings Tuesday after hours. I believe it's after hours. It's a little questionable. Yeah. But I'm going to say Tuesday after hours. Uh, consensus consensus is a dollar eighteen <laughs> a share. I predict a dollar fifty a share. I think this is a strong beat. Uh, Walmart doesn't technically doesn't typically blow it out of the water. They don't miss by much, and they don't really exceed expectations by much. So dollar fifty, I think, is pretty. Um, considerable as far as like a beat. Yeah. However, here's what I'm looking for. It's all about Walmart Plus. All about Walmart Plus. And so Walmart Plus is basically their answer to Prime. And I think it's a smart move for them. They were supposed to launch it back in February. It actually got launched September 1st. So you'll have the majority of the quarter, two thirds of the quarter that will show the numbers for, for uh, Walmart plus. Now I don't care so much about the revenue. Now I think that's a 2021 thing. What I care about are numbers. And we saw this with Disney plus nobody gives a, a flying squirrel about the numbers, um, uh, you know, like about the parks, they're like all about the numbers and the growth and it's high margin product. So I'm excited about that. Um, they're saying, so I guess the, the community or the consumer base is like 140 million. Yeah. So they're saying a few percentage of that. So it could be four or 5 million. Um, and by the end of next year, they're saying 10 million Walmart plus, I think that is a very, very conservative number. Yeah, I, I think that's too. an easily reached number. And those numbers are what's going to set this off, um, to through 2021. And that could be, if they get to that 10 million mark. That is $12 billion. Yeah. So I think that's huge. I think this looks similar to Disney as far as how that looks. And if those numbers come out big time, watch out. Yeah, man. I mean, and we've, we've seen how Disney Plus has, has grown considerably. And Walmart is almost as well of a run company as, as I would say Disney is. Obviously, Disney has been impacted a little bit more uh, negatively because of the Rona. But that's one thing that I, why I like Walmart so much and why we've talked about Walmart being one of those yeah. ones that didn't just survive through uh, the Rona, but actually thrived through it. And if we go and look at the chart here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about is that, you know, when this... Uh, when the, when the market crashed, this thing barely budged. Uh, I would say that, you know, this has uh, just been one of those 
super strong movers. And if we're seeing, uh, you know, increased COVID cases like we have been, you know, Walmart has been poised. They've been able to pivot incredibly well from the e-commerce side of things to try to compete uh, with Amazon. Everybody talks about how Amazon's going to take over the world. And yes, that's probably true, but Walmart's going to give them a, a, a nice run for their money. And I think with this Walmart plus it's, it's going to be something really big for them going to continue to do really, really well. I have them coming in estimated my estimated earnings per share is a dollar 58. Uh, the reason being is because to your point, Fat Man Zoom, you know, they don't beat by a whole lot, but last time they beat by 25%. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that again this time around. It'd be interesting to see how we see an outlook from them, you know, as far as quarter four is concerned, especially with the holidays. We've talked about e-commerce and how we expect to be expected to be monstrous and maybe even record setting because of people ordering gifts and that sort of thing for quarter four. So really interested to see what their outlook is going to be uh, for this quarter. Yeah, and um, also... A couple of stocks we didn't do, but just to give you a heads up, Target, if you're interested in Target, our sentiments are the same. Yeah. We would have set a B for Target. Target reports after hours on Wednesday. Um, so just so you guys, if you're interested in that, we're very bullish on Target as well. What do we got for number three? Number three is Home Depot. And so, and really Home Depot and to, to a Fat Man Zoom's point, Home Depot and Lowe's are kind of in the same category too. So our sentiments are relatively the same on both of them. But for me, Home Depot, I think, is going to be another one that probably continues to crush it. We saw incredible numbers from Zillow. We saw incredible numbers from DHI or DR Horton. We saw really good numbers from Rocket. So why wouldn't Lowe's and Home Depot also reap those benefits as well? Home Depot, I think, is probably going to benefit a little bit more because it's more geared towards contractors and that sort of thing, whereas Lowe's, I think, is more about the uh, do-it-yourselfer. But they're both going to do extremely well. They're they're coming in on Tuesday after hours, if I'm not mistaken, um, with uh, expected earnings per share at 302. I think they come in at um, probably 385. Now I know that sounds Holy crazy, shit. but they almost came to four. They actually did. They actually cracked four dollars two cents last quarter. I think they could come come even better than that, come closer to that. So that's why I have three to three to five. And don't be surprised if we see it up back up over four bucks a share. You've been taste testing that crack pie, haven't you? I have been. Haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it beats. I actually have it slightly beating at 305. Now, um, I will say I think that's easy. Yeah. Um, but um, actually, I have no good reason other than I think they beat. I'm not really sure by how much because I think there was a huge Russian home improvement. I want to see how sales were as like the stimulus didn't come back how did that affect people so listen they could very well blow it out um so i wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they hit that number i would be extremely surprised if they missed lowe's reports on wednesday but i mean here's the thing they are like you said i mean i can't really say much more i mean i have two words amen sister because <laughs> yeah. home improvement um has nowhere to go but uh it's just going to continue to go up yeah and people are going to continue to buy homes especially as that supply comes into play people are continue to make upgrades to their house as they're stuck in their home yep so i feel really good about home depot i think they have a great business model and i think they do really well um so yeah home depot for the win yeah the the main focus i think is going to be what they have to say for the housing uh market moving forward sure. into 2021 we've talked about how uh, zillow sees just huge growth and so if zillow is seeing that some of the other major uh home builders are seeing that it only only uh i think remains to be seen or or it only makes sense to to uh, to if we hear them also kind of uh, share in that sentiment. So hoping that we'll see that from Home Depot as well. What do you got for number four, my man? So we have N Nvidia, the old Fat Man Zoom special. So Nvidia <laughs> reports earnings on Wednesday after hours. Estimates are two dollars and fifty six cents a share. I have them coming in at two dollars and seventy cents a share, and we love this company i don't even know if we talk about it enough yeah but we love this company we love their their leadership um balance sheet looks great and their position in the gaming industry amongst other things that i mean they're best in class yeah point blank so 100 percent will be interesting for this earnings. so for this earnings 
a couple things to consider. One is last earnings data center revenue actually exceeded gaming revenue, which typically outperforms, outpaces the gaming revenue does. Yeah. So the analysts are predicting that the gaming revenue gets back to where it gets back to outperforming. And so we should see a larger number as far as the gaming revenue is concerned. We should see, we should hear really good news about that. Um, so that's number one, what's bigger. The ARM acquisition is going to be really important to hear something about it. And that was great news. And that was, I don't think necessarily that this sets the stock off, but if they don't say anything about it, or if they give us negative news, I think this, this has the potential to hurt the stock. So it's a great acquisition. It makes a whole lot of sense. We like what they did, but there's regulation issues where a lot of people are saying pump the brakes, not so fast. I think it's going to go through, yeah. but any negative news or any lack of news that's going to be a prop is going to be problematic for the stock. However, that's a buying opportunity. In my opinion, this stock honestly is going to be at 600 sooner than later. That's my belief. And I think it's, it's just positioned to continue to grow and to continue to outpace any of its competitors. Yeah. You know, it's so funny when people talk to us about companies that we feel so strongly about, especially with like Nvidia or Apple or Amazon. And they're like, well, what price makes sense for a good entry? And it's just like right now, you know, yeah. it doesn't even matter yeah. where the price is at this point because we feel so strongly about stocks like NVIDIA and we feel as if they're just buy and holds forever because you're going to, con you're, you're really just going to continue to benefit from just holding on to this for the long haul, especially if you got time on your side. Uh, NVIDIA is going to continue to do well. I mean, the, I mean, interested to see what we, if, if we hear any more as far as the autonomous driving side of things from NVIDIA too, um, I'm yeah. really excited for that area of the market for them to kind of work their way into, you know, NVIDIA has been known so much for gaming and it's cool to see how they've been branching out into other areas so that they are, they may be more well known in uh, some other parts of the market. I think that NVIDIA is going to be an absolute steal. I have them coming in um, uh, at 265 and I think that's a, that may be a little bit uh, more than than uh, I should say. It may be a little ambitious. I will I'll say that, but uh, we'll see. I mean, last time around they beat expectations by ten percent, which is why we saw this huge move last quarter. Uh, we'll see what happens this quarter, but I think they beat handily uh, either way. And if they do look for this to have break up above maybe even 572 if we see a strong enough move out of Nvidia, um, they have earnings on Wednesday. Uh, you said after hours. Yeah. So Wednesday after hours would be exciting to see what that, what happens with them on Wednesday. Uh, we like NVIDIA a lot. We think they beat. Finally, it's Workday. Workday is the last uh, stock here that we have on the list. And people are maybe, may or may not what, know what Workday is. This is something w that we said was a buy last time around as far as earnings were concerned. We thought they were going to absolutely crush. And so the beginning of our, our top five stocks to watch this week had to do with Palo Alto and how, how it related to remote work. Workday is the same thing. So if you guys don't know what they are, Workday is essentially a, uh, a online uh, um, human resources platform software. So if you're looking to try to clock in or maybe you need to request off work or whatever, well, you used to be able to do that in the office all the time, right? You just go to your boss, say, Hey, I need this off or whatever. Uh, well, Workday allows uh, human resources and even managers to be able to kind of do schedules and meetings and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, and so they have becoming increasingly popular in demand and all that good stuff. They absolutely crushed earnings last time by about 30%, and they and they skyrocketed. They went from about, uh, I would say, uh, let's see here, 217 all the way up to 248. And if I bring you back to the chart here, that was a huge gap. We, I mean, we knocked those earnings estimates out of the park last time around. I think they come in, their estimated earnings per share is at 67 cents on Thursday after hours. I think they come in at a dollar three. I think they break that century mark this time around because, like I said, we've been talking so much about, you know, whether there's a vaccine or not. Remote work is here to stay. Workday is going to be another one that just continues to roll here. We've talked about Salesforce and some of the other ones that are kind of in this space. And, um, you know, Workday is right in there. I think a lot of people overlook this one, kind of one that people just don't really think about. But this is going to be a strong mover, I feel, uh, when they come in for earnings on Thursday. Yeah, uh, I agree with your sentiments. I will uh, keep this short and sweet. 89 cents uh, share they beat. 
Uh, we got a lot of questions to get to. So for all the same reasons, I feel good about that. And um, we'll, it'll be interesting to see, but I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to perform really well this earnings. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll be fun to watch and, and I, this is going to round out our earnings season guys. And so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. If you guys like this kind of list, if you, you want to be part of the chaos crew, make sure you're clicking the join button down below. We'd love to have you guys here. If you guys are just visiting uh, our, our channel, we do this every Sunday stock watch Sunday at seven 30 PM Eastern time. We'd love to have you guys hang out more, make sure you're hitting that subscribe as well. And the notification bell. And uh, let's go ahead and get on to our question man yeah so jonathan schreiber thanks for the donation i know you i saw you asked it earlier uh so jonathan says happy erections <laughs> brad can you do a quick review of what to look at via balance sheet just use uh, yahoo finance cheers and thanks for your hard work you too uh fat man zoom is what you meant you'd be using my government name out here <laughs> listen um jonathan we did uh brad actually did a video on that so if you go to stockwatchsunday.com slash members and uh can you put that in there real quick yeah so uh if you go there we did a video on it so as part of the chaos crew you get access to members only videos we release them every monday so that's one that um you'll get uh but we did it for you i think you were the one that originally asked it last yeah. week so um brad did the breakdown so go check that out stockwatchsunday.com slash members and if you're not a member you want to get access to these videos we're up to like I don't even know like eight or 12 videos and they're just keeping keep growing so anyways that's that next question who do we have the next question is from jim becker mrna moderna what do we know now and would love to get what do we do now and would love to get your thoughts i feel the efficacy report will be out on monday if it is it'll be interesting to see what they say you know um for me moderna it, it's been a struggle because they come out with, uh, you know, material events and then their, you know, their C-level executives basically go and just dump more stock. And so that's just been really alarming to me. And I'm not saying that Moderna isn't going to be a strong player here, but even if they come out with a, an efficacy and if maybe if it comes out stronger than what Pfizer said it would, then we could see a strong move out of Moderna. Don't expect it to last though. We saw what happened with Pfizer. They came out with news. Their CEO dumps more than half of his own, own holdings. And then the stock comes back right back down. So just because we're seeing some really good positive vaccine news doesn't necessarily mean the stock's going to go up. I would treat this more or less like I would treat earnings in a sense, because this might be something where it goes up, it goes crazy for about five minutes, you know, figuratively speaking, and then it just comes right back down. My opinion, Johnson and Johnson probably has the best shot at having a stronger efficacy and, and also continuing to move. Now I know that th this might be something that people would disagree with, but they have the best balance sheet in America. And they're not going, you're, you probably won't likely see executives dumping the stock because they have money to spend. They actually have products, whereas Moderna doesn't. They, they've never had a product go out to market. And this will be the first one if it actually gets there. So I have a lot of questions as far as Moderna is concerned and uh, not, not a whole lot of answers just yet. And so that's what really has me worried and, and really kind of turns me off about Moderna. I'd much rather be sitting in something like Johnson & Johnson, even AstraZeneca um, over Moderna. So if you like it, fine, but those are my that's my opinion on the whole thing. All right, next question. Um, Gorhar, I'm down on Big C, down 12%. What are the chances of it catching up? Which one was it? Big C, Big Commerce. Uh, yeah, what, how do you feel about Big C, brother? <laughs> I must be honest. I, I I did love Big C. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sort of holding off for a second. So long term, I love Big C. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, moving forward, they'll probably do well. We saw some some really t a really tough offering come out from Big C, and this is actually starting to approach a uh, an all-time low for them. So this came down to 63.77. It uh, closed at 66.79. We're really not that far off there. This should act as a support, though, so maybe have some encouragement there. If it doesn't hold this support level, look out below, because it might continue to come down quite quite considerably. Yeah, and you may not listen. If you're down twelve percent, obviously um, that's not the best position. We've all been there before. Yeah, but you know what's better than being down twelve percent? Or sorry, you know what's worse than being down twelve percent is being down twenty percent. Yeah. So you're at a support. 
see if the support stays. So I wouldn't necessarily get out now, but I'd know I'd establish my, at my exit point. Yeah. And like, okay, this is it. This is it. Now, if you are really long-term, cool, feel free to stay in. But I think now's the time where you're like, here's my exit. And I'll tell you this, if you get out, let's say it does go down and it doesn't hold support and it gets down to 14, 15% and you're out. It's three months from now, you're not even going to remember it. Right. But if you end up losing 50%, you're going to remember that. So I know it's tough. We don't win them all. We can't win all those trades. But yeah, that offering really hurt. But overall, I really, I feel strongly about their mo uh, their model. Yeah. All right. Next question we have, Gabriel Navarro, Senores, where's the calendar that used to show earnings and recommendations? Um, so that was on WeTrade HQ. We've scaled back some things on WeTrade HQ, but um, I would just go to Yahoo Earnings. So Yahoo Earnings calendar is, is probably your best bet. Uh, what do you use? I use Earnings Whispers. Whispers. Yeah, Earnings Whispers. Yeah. You can you, you can go on their website or they have a, a Twitter uh, account as well. Earnings whispers are, is usually the quickest and easiest way to find it. Um, but even, yeah, just something like Yahoo or whatever, but yeah, we've consolidated. We trade HQ now, um, a little bit and not, and tried not to make it so confusing. We want to try to make that website as simple as possible. So speaking of Twitter, <laughs> I got a tweet. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know who I got a tweet from who the number one slot on the fat man zoom shit list <laughs> on the hit list, bro. So I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name, but anyways, I'll, I'll it'll come to me, but yeah, he, he sent me an apology. Very nice oh. written letter. I just haven't decided James Sauter. That's his name. Yeah. yeah James Sauter. That's his name. I just haven't figured out what that means. Like once you're on the hit list, like, can you come off the hit list? <laughs> if you apologize or are you just on there? Forever. Sorry, I don't want to be the first one on your hit list. You're <laughs> hilarious and intelligent. Listen to him suck it up. <laughs> a very good addition to the show. Thanks for your information. And he was talking shit on Rocket. And I still have Rocket and I changed my mind about it. No shit you did when it goes up 5%. <laughs> and he said, especially after Jim Cramer said something. Yeah, Jim no, oh, Jim it. has to say something. No. <laughs> um, that's so funny. No, it's, so, it's, it's hilarious when you brought that up last week because there's comments about people actually looking forward to being on that list themselves because we've had a couple of people that just love to give us a hard time. So, um. <laughs> oh, yeah. so he's not coming off. I just decided that. <laughs> All right, next question is, if you want to see the hit list, check me out, fatmanzoom.com, yes. or fatmanzoom on Twitter. At fatmanzoom, yeah. Uh, if Neo has great earnings and even better outcome, an even better outcome is Brad Bradley. He called you Bradley. Ooh, is damn. Bradley going to get on board other than just a potential spec play? Nope. So Landon L's already in. That's a hard no. <laughs> I mean, Very listen, we, like, how many times do we have to see issues come out of, uh, you know, the Chinese sector and 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 not learn our lesson. I'm not saying that NIO is or NEO is not going to do well. Maybe they they crush earnings and maybe this thing keeps going to seventy dollars a share. So, but there's still not one part of me that wants to be in this because of the fact that it's just there. There's a huge transparency issue, and you can argue that all you want, but there is, and I just I don't want any parts of it. Uh, Jonathan Schreiber, neither do neither. Uh, Harry D, I'd really like to know your thoughts on Etsy. The commentators. I've been knocking this down and it's currently bouncing off the 123 six month or the, the six month trend line. Uh, Etsy. I don't care what the analysts say. This thing is going to continue to do well. We've talked about this Shopify, some of the other beat down e-commerce stocks as, as we go into the fourth quarter, Etsy, I think is going to be an absolute steal here in the one twenties. I mean, this went up as high as one fifty five, uh, and right now where it sits one twenty seems to be a relatively decent support. So if we, if it continues to hold support there, I think it'll do well. If by some chance this comes back down in the one teens, it's a clear buy in my opinion, but we love Etsy is the reason that they're, they were included on the S and P 500. The growth here is going to continue to do, uh, what it's going to do, especially when it comes to demand. Um, Cool. Jonathan, sorry, let me correct that. You had it said if you should keep Rocket down 17%, add more. Um, I would hold on to it. It's a hold. Uh, I wouldn't say to add more yet, but yeah, I think you just hold on to it and yeah. see how these next couple months play out. We got 486 uh, people in here hanging out. We appreciate you guys. If you could give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel, and if you find value in our streams, we certainly would appreciate it. But it's cool to see we got almost 500 folks in here hanging out. All righty, Esperanza. 
Will target will the will a target beat for earnings impact Ulta? Maybe not now, but in the future. Mm, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that the Alta move has already kind of been made. They announced the partnership uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know if the, the target beat would necessarily impact Alta outright. I mean, I'm sure it probably helps it, but I don't think it's going to be some sort of, we're not going to see some sort of sympathy reaction because target did well on earnings. All right, Joe, what we got to get on walk car. Will the supply issues surrounding the new lineup of graphic cards impact NVIDIA? Um, potentially. I mean, I guess we'll probably see if that, if they speak on that as far as their upcoming earnings are concerned on Wednesday, but, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's really going to impact them and really uh, make me want to sell NVIDIA because of something like that. Um, just, okay. Um, Raymond Quesada, real question. What conditioner does Brad use in his hair? <laughs> Listen, I use American Crew. I use all the Paul Mitchell products, the Mitch stuff. So all the good stuff. I, don't, I spare no expense on the hair. Uh, I think we say listen a lot. I think both of us say listen a lot, by the way. That being said. Yeah. Listen here. That might be the new that being said. <laughs> all right. Ivan Mendoza, do you guys speak Spanish? Ivan Mendoza. I do not. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. The cheesecloth condom pick of the week. Oh, you know, I'm not going to do Neo. I wanted to. I wanted well, to. Didn't you do that last week? No, I did Aurora Cannabis. And damn, that didn't oh. continue to just get its ass beat. Um <laughs> thing came all the way back down to six dollars a share what a pos honestly i don't know if i have one this week i, I really wanted to make it neo because and, and maybe we can just talk about neo real quick I, I did talk to you guys about this just briefly a couple minutes ago but listen it let's stop listening to people on twitter stop listening to the chat rooms that are in you know robin hood and weeble and stuff like that about them pumping it up like crazy those are the people that are just trying to get out at this point because they've been in since ten dollars a share they're trying to take some money from you the thing i i told you guys that the rug was going to get pulled at some point friday it started i think that there's going to be a lot of people that don't want to be in this come earnings time so monday tuesday wednesday was earnings on a neo is it thursday sure Okay, well, anyways, leading up to earnings, you're going to see probably some accelerated selling as far as this is concerned. This came all the way down from $54.20 to $44, $43 at, at the close of after hours on Friday. Don't expect this to go up leading up into earnings. I think there's going to want to, there's going to be a lot of people that want to get out of Dodge before that happens. Um, shoot, I totally lost it. I was just going to say something. Wait, so what is your cheesecloth condom pick? Did we figure that it's out? It's Neo. I'm just, we're just doing Neo. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's on Tuesday is Neo's after Tuesday. Hours, okay. Tuesday. Um, yeah, Yamil said, what? what? Yamil, you bringing heat? You bringing heat? <laughs> Man. Um, shoot. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought, but a lot of people, listen, we like Baba a lot. We like AMD, Netflix. Oh, that's it. I had a question for you before we get into the football. Yeah. Um, so SpaceX had a successful launch just now. Yeah. Right before we went live. Yeah. Does that impact Tesla's stock at all? I Well, so the last time uh, they uh, launched up in the space, it did. Last time it actually did impact the stock, even though it has nothing to do with Tesla, the company, people still wanted to go buy up some Tesla because I guess they thought that it would impact it to some degree. It has nothing to do. One doesn't have anything to do with the other. Um, SpaceX is a completely separate entity from Tesla, just as it's a separate entity from the boring company. And it's a separate entity from uh, Starlink. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, Tesla may be impacted. We could see a little bit of a pop, but I wouldn't expect any kind of sustained move because of this, but it's great stuff, man. It's so awesome to see people being shot up into space again. <laughs> From, I mean, it's just cool. It's just something feel. There's something about it that you just can't feel more American when you start to when you when you're seeing some American uh, astronauts being uh, flown into space. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, sir. Um, so I can. Well, we're early. It's eight fifteen. 
Yeah. So we can get into the Ravens, or you, I, I can pull a couple more questions. Pull a couple more. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Billy Hall made a comment. All Neo lovers just invest in Tesla. At least you get legitimate information. Yeah, exactly. With a viable track record right. and a calculated exit plan. Couldn't agree more. Could have said it better myself. Um, somebody had a good question regarding... Um, Tommy D said, hey, Brad, I know Ride R-I-D is speculative, but this company seems like it's going to be the real deal. What are your thoughts? Which one? Ride? Yes. Ride is, what one is that? Oh, that's uh, Lordstown. Uh, I think Lordstown, there's definitely some promise here. Look, all of EVs were going crazy last week, and it's about time they probably start to cool off because everybody's trying to chase the next Tesla. And we keep trying to say this, and we're just going to continue to beat the dead horse, I guess. There isn't going to be a next Tesla. There's probably going to be a couple of he- of these that maybe rise above the ashes a little bit out of the terrible companies that a lot of these are. And when you look at their balance sheets, and I'm just talking about fundamentals here, not about the speculation of what they could be, but what's going on with them right now. And so with Lordstown, they may have some promise here because of their relationship with uh, Workhorse and the amount, I think it's what, 10 to 15%, I think, that Workhorse owns of uh, Lordstown. Look for some consolidation in this market. Look for some of the bigger companies, and I'm talking Ford, GM, uh, and Fiat maybe. Start scooping up some of these smaller companies to gain all of their technology because I don't see any of these really kind of moving out uh, and kind of breaking into this market. You got to remember, it was extremely hard for Tesla to break into, you know, the barrier of the big three in America. There wasn't an American car company out there that was able to do what Tesla did in over a hundred years. So to think that some of one, one of these other companies is going to come out and do extremely well, I think is just um, extremely high expectations. And it's, it's very unlikely that we'll see that, but Lordstown, I think could be something that maybe gets some movement, but just really, like I said, understand the, the landscape and, and the industries that we're looking at here and the barrier to entry is just so difficult. Yeah. Um, I don't know who asked this question, but I did see it and I think it's a good one to have. So there's some art question, art questions, ARK. Um, have you heard Anthony Moran ask, what have you guys heard about arc being bought out? Um, but more importantly, actually answer that question. Have you heard anything about that? I have not. No, I have not either. Um, but somebody did ask another interesting question, which was um, thoughts on arc. If you're a long-term investor rather than, um, you know, like something to get in is arc a good play to just get in. If you're a long-term investor um, as an ETF, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you're a long-term investor, sure. I mean, we've talked about Kathy Wood, and we're actually really big fans of hers, and um, she runs a really uh, tight ship over there, and has done some really has made some really good investment decisions um, that's caused the ETF to do rather well. Also, consider that 10% of that ETF is made up of Tesla. So, you know, her biggest claim to fame has been on one company, and it's not to say that she's made poor decisions on all the other ones, but you know, a large part of her claim to fame has been Tesla. So um, longer term, obviously, when you're getting into disruptive technology, you're going to see a lot of volatility. So as long as you're prepared for that, then great. But I think that it's a good long-term play for sure. What's up, William Williams? All right. Uh, Locks and Woo, thanks for the donation. Ema, thanks for the donation. Turning from bear to bull. You call me a so chicken Lachs choker? Asked, William Williams Lachs? called us a chicken choker. Thoughts on Dynatra- Dynatrace, DT, please. <laughs> what is the ticker symbol? <clears throat> What'd you say? Uh, I think it's D- DT. DT? Yeah. Dynatrace. Uh, yeah, so this one's interesting. Outperform other computer computer technologies. Just looking at some of the headlines here. Um, they just had earnings, and it doesn't look like they were all that spectacular, but it's come down on the chart to an area where it seems as if it's a reasonable area of support. So 3450 seems like it could be a spot to maybe grab some if it holds those levels. If it does not though, look out to see where this might land because it, it there's not a whole there's not really a solid support after that. So if this breaks through, it could potentially come back down below 30. So just be careful. All right, uh, Gus, I was expecting TDOC would go up after election and bought at 205. Then it dropped $30 on me. What made it go down? 
Um, T Doc is going to be one that. Um, it, the, what made it went go down? Let me answer that question. Was the vaccine, you know, uh, mm-hmm. stuff? What I think people are failing to realize, and we've been talking about this now uh, about remote work and everything else, but it relates to teledoc as well. You know, when doctors and physicians and even patients are finding that working through telehealth makes your life a lot easier. You don't have to make trips to the doctor's office. You can do it uh, via telehealth or telemedicine. Um, It just makes things more streamlined and um, people can get what they need much faster instead of having to wait at a doctor's office forever. Uh, And so I think that teledoc is going to continue to do well long term. If you can, you know, kind of weather this storm as far as the vaccine's concerned and some of the positive news that's coming out with that and how this might actually impact tele- teledoc to the downside, um, then I think you'll be just fine. All right. And then the last question I have is from Reshma Srinivas. Hey, Brad and Christian, great show. Thoughts on RVLV. The company name is Revolve. Seems to have a brighter future and read that it's a future AI play. Yeah. Um, interesting earnings last time around, and it actually had a really strong move too. This is super volatile. Just be careful with this. AI obviously is going to continue to be uh, something that disrupts uh, the industries. And, and that's just across the board, right? It doesn't really matter what business that you're getting into. AI could, could impact uh, your business, whether you're getting, whether you're in the blue collar side of things, whether you're manufacturing, whether you're in services, uh, but you know, I haven't, I don't know this one all that well from a fundamental standpoint. But just by looking at this chart, it looks extremely volatile, and I do know the industry itself is also very volatile. Just be careful with this one. If I'm looking at the chart, maybe see if it pulls back to around seventeen or eighteen dollars a share and uh, bounces from there. Yeah, from a long-term perspective, I must say, long-term perspective, I like the model. I mean, essentially, it's like Joss and Maine or Wayfair for apparel, right? where they're in an aggregate, right? They're an online platform. We like, you know, we like that e-commerce where they sort of like resell brands. So they have partnerships with brands. That's great. My concern is with retail and apparel, how much margin can you make? It seems like they do okay with that. So yeah, seems pretty good. I think there is opportunity there just really keeping an eye on their growth. It, it's kind of high in my opinion, but from a long-term perspective, I could see them making a move. Just be careful. Yeah. All right. So tonight we have <laughs> the Ravens versus the Patriots. Any predictions? Oh, the Ravens are going to spank that ass. Spank it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, listen, The uh, I, I just said listen again. The way that the Patriots played the Jets last week, I mean, the Ravens should walk all over them. And I'm not well, even talking necessarily the offense. I mean, it might not be a crazy offensive game, but that defense is going to just roll all over it. Like, Cam Newton has no, has no weapons. So what's your prediction? I think Ravens beat 17. No, no, no. Ravens haven't scored, haven't had a game under 20 points in what, 33 games? So I'll have to go 27 21 Ravens. All right. I'm going to go. Oh, that was close to my score. I do think the Ravens are going to win. Uh, welcome to the crew, Ashgrove 33. Hell yeah. Um, I will say, I'm going to adjust my score a little bit. I'm going to say 24 to 20, oh, 24 to 21. Sorry. It's a Ooh, that's score. That was really close. Going. All right. Uh, and I'll tell you why, because of the jets game, the jets game shows that it doesn't matter how good a team is when they're playing somebody, they consider, consider a rival. The jets always play the Patriots hard. Even yeah. when Brady was there, even though, when they were awesome, right. they always play them hard. And I think, I mean, there's no doubt the Ravens are the better team, but I think the Patriots are going to play them hard because it's the Ravens. Yeah. And so um, for that reason, 20, oh, 24, 21. Man, that, be tight. that is going to be tight. It wouldn't surprise me if it was that close because it, it, between Bill Belichick and, and John Harbaugh, those two coaches, to, uh, you know, uh, competing against each other is always a good show. Um, but uh, I see some. I saw somebody saying that about how Cam sucks, and I, I, I just wanted to speak to that as our best. I don't think Cam sucks. I think he just—it's just the personnel around him is just not not that talented, and so 
he's he's got a, you know he doesn't have a whole lot to work with and yeah, he definitely does and so i don't think it's really an indictment on cam newton and i just don't know if that's really all that fair he just has nobody uh on that side of the ball yeah i would agree man cam like cam's had a tough go and it, is julian edelman still out yeah yeah and julian edelman's great don't yeah. get me wrong but he's not going to carry you. And if he's out, he was their only weapon. He's a great number two. Yeah. But like, if he's your only weapon, you're in trouble. And when he's gone, you're really in trouble. Got really young receivers. And on top of that, dude, Belichick, man, he just, I think what's biting in the, him right now in the ass is the fact that like, he's always thought like, I'll put anybody in and it'll work. Yeah. He's show, like it's showing like, you can't just have nobody and expect to win. Like right. they, this is, Honestly, showing the value of Brady, man. Brady looked incredible again today. Yeah, you know, like well, I, I mean, know, man, on the defensive side of the ball, they're they don't they have, they're without eight players that opted out for the season too. So like, yeah, you you don't have your all star all pro players that you're used to having. So it definitely makes a huge difference for sure. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, I ho- I mean, I hope the Ravens stomp them. Uh, <laughs> so Billy, yeah, Billy the Hoyle should. Win this. Billy Hoyle says 1776 Ravens America score. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Steve King, you guys rock because of my new promotion. It'll be hard for me to make it in the streams during the week. So I'll be looking forward to the stock watch Sundays for sure, man. We get it. We get it, man. We're here for you. And congrats, Steve. We appreciate you, brother. We hope All you right, got a $69,000 a- raise. <laughs> uh, when we get to 69,000 followers, we'll do something. Yeah. By the way, speaking of followers and uh, members and all that good stuff, if you guys have been seeing some folks joining our Chaos Crew as a channel member, make sure you hit the join button. We'll give a, give you a daily watch list as well as access to our public portfolio and private live streams. If you want to be a part of that, we are uh, setting up to have 1,000 members. We're at 930 right now. We get to that 1,000 member mark, and we will select one random lucky winner. to. Uh, we will give them one free stock of Tesla. So, uh, make sure that you're signing up. You want to be a part of the chaos crew, hit the join button next to subscribe or the links in the description. It's in there as well. If you can't find it and fat man zoom, uh, that is going to do it for tonight's stream. My man, let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's do it. You've go. lost that love and feeling. <laughs> go Ravens. <laughs> oh.